Yeah, I've been waiting for this. Hey everyone, it's Press Any Button and we are back with our rail shooter series and today we're going to be focusing on rail movement. So that's just going to be traveling along a rail, starting and stopping, and that's all going to be dependent on if we encounter enemies and if we clear a room of enemies. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. And if you look in the scene view there, you can see the camera just moving along the rail. Now my enemies are shooting at me, so I take out my enemies and voila, just like that, we continue into the rest of this little construction here. Now I'm going to drop a quick disclaimer. About 70% of the script is um, from a tutorial on how to make a rail system. And that is provided by a YouTuber called NECN. I, I think that's their name. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. And pretty much I won't be going over too much of the script in detail because they do a fantastic job of that. But we've commandeered the script for our own purposes, added a couple of pieces of functionality here and there to actually apply it to the game that we're trying to make. The first thing you're going to want to do is make two scripts, one called rail and one called mover. Now you can either do that by just creating them or you can go down to the description again and look for the packages that I've provided. I recommend that you just take the script straight from the package just because there is a lot of content there and I'm not going to go through it. As I said, if you did want to type in the script manually, I'll just do a little sweep of each one and just watch this in some kind of like slow speed and you'll eventually get what's going on here. But again, I recommend that you just rip the scripts straight out of the description below because it's just going to save you a lot of time. There's not much that you're gaining from typing it up, except from passing errors, many, many passing errors uh, that you might encounter. So let's look at the rail script. The rail script pretty much just draws out the rail. So visually for us, the script will provide a dotted line to indicate where the rail is going, which is fantastic. It takes some nodes, which we provide. So they're public transforms that we provide in the inspector and draws a rail through those nodes. So we just set the waypoints and then we can travel along the waypoints using the mover script. Now the mover script is where we've actually made a couple of changes. So if you did do a Dora the Explorer where I mentioned the other YouTuber, then you'll see that we have public ball is paused, which is something new. And then if we go down, we've got void on trigger enter collider other, and we've got some other things just under transition here. We've just got an if statement to kind of gate off some functionality unless something happens. So let me explain what we're actually doing with this script. This is the script that allows us to move along the rail. So it takes the information and we just transition from node to node in specific ways, which is brilliant. And there's a couple of extra spots of functionality. So you've got different ways that you can move along this rail. You can go in a reverse order, you can loop your movement, you can ping pong, which means when you get to the end, you'll do a reverse movement back to the beginning again. And that's all really cool, but we won't go into that today. What we will do is look at void on trigger, enter collide other. So if you imagine our object is moving along the rail, they'll just keep moving and they won't stop for anything because we haven't explicitly said stop if a certain thing happens. So what I've done is I've created an object and I've tagged it as encounter. And when our game object that the mover script is attached to, which is the main camera, collides with a game object with tag encounter, then this Boolean becomes true and we destroy the other game object. And then I've made an else if where I've said, if the object is exit instead, then we're going to make is paused false and we'll destroy the other game object. So in each instance, the object that is causing us to go into either is paused is true or is paused is false will be destroyed. Now we use our Boolean down here in private void and we just add it to envelop everything that allows the movement of our game object around the rail. Now the reason why we've done that, if we come in contact with that encounter object, then we wanna stop the movement from happening, which will allow us to take out the enemies. And then when a game object exit collides with us, then we'll just continue the movement and keep going along the track, which is really cool. So we'll go back to Unity and I'll show you how we've set these things up. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create your own rail. So we're going to create a 3D object. I'm going to use a cube just because we can kind of see which way a cube is facing as opposed to a sphere, of course. And I'll put my cube there. We'll make some copies of this cube. So I'm going to hit Control C and just spam Control V a couple of times. Then I'll attach my rail script to this cube. So we'll find the script, rail, and I'll make all of these other cubes children of this initial cube. Now I can move each of these children relative to the original cube or the parent. And so I'll just move them forward. That's nice and easy. And I've just decided to space them out a little bit like that. Okay, then we will edit the size of the rail nodes. So how many nodes do we have? Well, our cube is going to be our first node. And then we have four other cubes. So we'll have size five here. So this is the amount of waypoints that you have on your track. And then we just drag in each waypoint. Now, as you could see in the scene view, while I was doing that, the track was being assembled. And what I'll do is I'll deactivate this one that we're currently working with. So at this point, you'll want to add the mover script to your main camera. So add component and then find the mover script. And in the inspector, it will give you a couple of options to actually interact with the rail. 
So we have our current rail set as rail start, but I've deactivated that, so we'll put cube instead. Now the cat mall and the linear are things we can play around with. Cat mall just provides like smoother turns. So if you think about like traveling along planets in Super Mario Galaxy, that kind of nice smooth movement, whereas linear is just like waypoint to waypoint to waypoint. It just as the crow flies kind of thing. So you can mess around with linear or cat mall, or whatever. Just play around with this to be honest. And if we start our game, then we'll see this interaction with the new rail. And you can see that we've traveled along that rail. Of course, another thing you'd want to do is deactivate the mesh renderer for each one of these nodes. And you'll also want to deactivate any colliders that those nodes have. Because if you have any colliders on these nodes, you run the risk of blocking the ray casts that allow us to actually shoot our enemies, which is not something that we want. Okay, so we've set up a basic rail. I'll get rid of this demonstration rail and go back to what I had before. And bear in mind, as you play around with the rail, you'll want to rotate your nodes uh, just to mess around with like orientation and things like that, just so you can really see what's happening with that system. But once we're out of that, we can then figure out how to stop and start along this rail. All we need to do is create a couple of objects. So I chose to create some spheres and then we'll tag these objects. So you go to add tag and then you'll type in your tag encounter or exit. So of course I've used the tag encounter. So I've got my spheres set up here. You can see the encounter check is what I've labeled it as. It's a prefab right now, but don't worry about that. And we've got exit check and they're both tagged accordingly. Now I'll give you a manual demonstration of what we've actually done with both of these in order to get that stop and start movement. Okay, so you can see that the camera stopped there. And if I bring this over, huge collider, you can see that we start that movement again. Great, but we want that to happen when our enemies get taken out, not because we've dragged some things around the scene view, because you're not gonna be there with the person who's playing your game to make sure that everything's running properly. So how do we get some automation going here? Well, I've created an empty game object and I've called that fight zone. On fight zone, you'll want to create a new script and call that fight zone. And we'll open up mono develop and I'll talk about that script. So this is a script you really don't need to pull from the project, it is very simple. But fight zone is an empty game object that allows us to resume the movement along the rail once all of our enemies get taken out. Let me explain what the script is actually doing. So we get a public game object and we call that the starter. Now the starter is going to be exit check or the object that is tagged exit. Then we have a public transform and that is node location. So we want to use a node that's actually on the rail. If you use a position in between two nodes, what you'll get is a jump from that position to the next node when you resume gameplay. And that's not something that we want to do. So I've just labeled it node location as a reminder that you'll want to take the location of a particular node as the transform for the instantiation that we'll be looking at in void update. In void update, we are searching for a game object with the tag enemy. If we can't find a game object with the tag enemy, then we're going to instantiate starter, so the exit game object, at node location and node rotation, so at that public transform that we get there. And then we're going to destroy this game object so that it's not taking up any resources, it's not floating around and uh, causing weird stuff to happen because we'll keep using game objects like this. Now, I know what you're thinking. If we're searching the entire game to find out if there are any enemies, then aren't we going to come up against a problem when there's multiple scenes where we're actually taking out enemies and then proceeding, taking out enemies and then proceeding? Because those enemies will be somewhere further on into the level. We'll actually we'll be dealing with one scene of enemies at a time. And so we'll instantiate a whole group of enemies only after we trigger a certain event. So that's something that we'll look at in further parts. Now, if I go back to Unity, I can show you that Fight Zone is just sort of hanging out in the scene here. It doesn't really matter where we place it, but I thought, you know, place it just somewhere in relation to the things that are happening so that we don't get confused. Of course, you could like label these different things, Fight Zone 1, 2, 3, 4, for as many scenes that you have combat for. And let's get an idea of what Fight Zone does when it's in action. Okay, so start the game, encounter that, it gets deleted, we stop. I shoot this, and we still have the enemy tag present in the scene, but I have to take this one out. Now, look really closely at the node when I do this. If you blinked, you would have missed it, or if my frame rate's trash enough, you would have missed it, but we instantiated exit right here on the node and continued our movement. So to set up fight zone, you'll want to take that exit check and drag it into the starter location, and then you'll want to go to your rail and find the node that you want to resume from. So the node you want to resume from is the node you would have stopped at. So I open up the drop down here to get all of the children of the initial rail, click through these nodes till I find the one that I want. And it turns out it's node two. So I go over to fight zone, drag in node two, simple as, and we're pretty much good to go. The last thing you'll want to do with these is just deactivate the mesh renderer, deactivate any colliders, because again, you don't want them interfering with your raycasts or our shooting. And once you've done that, 
if you have these objects gray and normal as most of our other game objects then you'll just want to drag them down into the relevant file and create a prefab just like this and i don't want to actually create a new prefab because i've already got my prefabs here but that is it for this part we are going to be steamrolling through with the rest of this project focusing on level building and aesthetics as i've said i hope you found this useful make sure that you check out that video that i've linked in the description below if you do want a greater grasp on how this rail system works and until next time as always press on and keep creating